The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff. Welcome, honorable members, to this session of the NTV People's Parliament. We are seated here in Kalungu District. Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of the People's Parliament, presides. Madam Speaker, agriculture is the backbone of the Ugandan economy. In fact, over 70% of the entire population is employed in this sector. However, there are many bottlenecks that affect this sector, including but not limited to poor infrastructure not just here in Kalungu, but in other districts of the country. I therefore suggest, Madam Speaker, that we discuss the challenges of the agriculture sector in Kalungu district. Those in favor, I to the contrary, no? Aye. Eyes have it. Honorable members, you are the people of Kalungu who belong to the greater massacre. And as you are aware, massacre was the major but the people of Masaka were the major growers of matoke and coffee. Is the situation still the same? Are you still supplying this country with matoke and with coffee? Honorable member, can you give us the situation in Kalungu? Are you still the major producers of matoke and coffee? Which coffee were you growing? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Move closer to the microphone, please. Uh, honorable members of the House, my name is Achiemba Paul, and I serve as the District Production and Marketing Officer in this district. Uh, Madam uh, Speaker, as the, the convener said, 70% of the community in this district derive their livelihood from agriculture. Therefore, agriculture is a very, very important industry in this district. Uh, Madam Speaker, as you are aware, the current development agenda for uh, promoting agricultural production in the country is called Operation Wealth Creation. Uh, it is that agenda through which uh, the management of this district is But your Operation Wealth Creation has just come yes, to Madam operation. Speaker. Yes. Previously, of course, there were interventions, including NADS, etc. But before I dwell into what has been achieved, allow but me do, to do give we, a do we still produce matoke and coffee as we used to? Madam Speaker, we still do produce matoke and coffee, but uh, not as much as we used to. What went wrong? Uh, a number of things. First of all, due to continuous cropping, uh, the soil fertility has declined. You are aware that uh, the population has been growing and the land is not expanding. So I've been compelled to produce over and over again on smaller plots of, the, of land without giving due regard to replenishing the nutrients. So because of that, we are increasingly producing less. That's one. Secondly, you appreciate that weather patterns have changed for the worst. Year in, year out, we have extreme weather events. We, when we don't get Move drought, closer to the microphone, we please. get uh, 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 floods. And because of that, production uh, is hampered. We, because of the weather changes, we are increasingly getting pest and disease problems, which did not used to be uh, serious problems in the past. A case in point is banana bacterial wilt disease. Members may have heard about that disease from the media and their friends across the country. That disease is also here and it is wreaking havoc. However, we are trying to manage it. Besides that, uh, the other important enterprise you mentioned, coffee, is also affected by a very, very serious pest. And this is the coffee trick boar. Now, that pest and that disease and many others did not used to be serious problem in the past. But because of uh, uh, the emerging issues like weather, as I've said, they also become issues. Okay. Madam Speaker, uh, we have a very serious problem at the moment, and that relates to agriculture advisory services. 
for the past one year, we've not had people on the ground to go out yes, and advise farmers. Mm. And you know farmers need to be advised. Farmers need to be updated on the new technologies that ca have come up. Farmers need to be updated on the modern new uh, production practices. Right? So in general, you are not producing as you used to? Yes. The mothers are the ones who are the managers of these uh, gardens. Please, can you I give us your opinion? I will give you an opportunity, another opportunity. Please, ma'am. What is your opinion on his view? The youth, they are now running to Kampal for better paying jobs. They are looking for better jobs in Kampala. But still, uh, the people of Kalongo, uh, some of them are not less actually, but the, the fertility of the soil has really decreased because I think of the uh, artificial but fertilizers. But there is a lot of manure around. You have cows, you have goats, you have Not chicken. everybody has, you ha of course. Not everybody. There are a few people who have got cows and goats, and if they have one, two, and that is not enough. That is laziness also. <laughs> Why don't you rear the goats? Why don't you <laughs> have cows in your home? Okay, I'll give you another opportunity. You. Yes, you have the platform, sir. What happened? Madam Speaker, thank Face you. Face the people, please. Honorable members of the House, property emanated from the HIV storage that hit us between 92 and 2002, which deprived us of very hard-working manpower and our parents and the rest. We are recovering from the shock. Two, the manpower of the youth whom we have have been generally told only to go to Kampala and work from there, whether doing odd jobs or the rest. So if you went and found out from uh, the people owning Bibanja, they are elderly people who actually cannot come up. Because me, I would challenge the absence of uh, the so-called extension workers for a year. Have we been doing better in the past? That would be the question. Otherwise, uh, the absence in a year came in as an intervention after seeing that things were not working up well. HIV has not only deprived us of money and the ability to fund projects that would work, but also has demoralized the would-be working class. The class thinks that they don't have a future to live, so they, there is no need to plant that amount in business. Okay. May I accept we should come up and be true at ourselves and say we are a bit lazy. The youth, urban migration, you are rushing to Kampala and not participating in the growing of, of, of food in this district. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm by the name of Isiko Ivan. Um, it is true, the youth are running to town uh, because they are looking for jobs in town, better, better paying jobs in town. That's why they are running away from villages. So agriculture is not paying? Agriculture is not paying, really. And we are a bit lazy. Youth are, are lazy. So that's why they are running to town. Thank you, Madam. Which information do you want to give? How do you expect me as a youth? I'm done with my university. Actually, I'm doing, let me say law. Do you really expect me to go in villages and dig? Of course not, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, Honorable. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you, 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 you had a point. Chairman, please take your seat. Thank you. But stop being lazy and go to the gardens. <laughs> generally, people in Buganda here, in Masaka, they are generally lazy. Including yourself? Excluding me. <laughs> because I'm a very hardworking person. Before, we used to, le to depend on the Bapakas. In those days of 60s, people used to come from Rwanda, Bachiga from Kabale. They were doing all those banana plantations. Right now, they are the ones in power. They are no longer doing that. <laughs> so production in Greater Masaka, in particular in Kalungu, has failed. And so they, you mean you were not the people who were digging? No.
the production of, 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 of matoke, and the of coffee, coffee was engineered the, by the by people the, by from the West? Yes. Shame upon and the now, right massacre. now, <laughs> they are doing their own. That is the truth. Is there any family here who did not have a mopakas here in Buganda? Yes. Most of us, all these coffee which educated us, they were done by Bapakasi, those who were Banyarwanda and the Bachiga, and that's when we had a high level of production. This current government has also facilitated the laziness of the, our community. First of all, the abolition of graduated tax. It was an incentive for the people to work. Nobody would go to Kampala without five grad, graduated tax. You could not go to the city. By abolition of that, people just walk on border border on a trailer and they end up in Kampala. If someone was looking for graduated tax for five years, that was those good five years in production. That has led the community to look as it is. That is the fact. Government has gone ahead and giving out free things. Free education. Free, free medical care. Free seeds. No, free things. There is free education. Free, free medical care. Now they are giving free seeds for people to plant. And this has affected the people. The community has gone worse. That the liberalization of this alcohol. You find alcohol is, which is costing 200 shillings of the very highest content. These people, they just drink and sleep. They don't have the energy. <laughs> that has led to the low level of development. And unfortunate. So we are blaming soil infertility, population, weather patterns, which used to be there. The weather has been there for a long time. But you people, you're concentrating on drinking, yes. You want to supplement something. Chairman, I'll probably give you another opportunity. Let Thank me hear you, from Madam. the youth. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mm. I want to supplement on what the precurrent speaker has said, that free seedlings. Yet you ha we are having corrupt office officials. They give you that seeds. You misuse it. You use it for your own good, for your own use or purpose. Who are those officials? The, let me say for NAD officials, yeah? NAD. The NAD's officials, I yeah? thought we were point-pointing the chairman. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But those people who are, who are given those seedlings, like the coffee seedlings, yeah? Mm. They give them that seedlings to supply them into the community, but they, they take them to their gardens. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes sell they, them, I'm uh -huh, told. And they bring it in... A, if this season is for sunshine, they bring it in the sunshine season, not in the rainfall season. Please. <laughs> okay. Please, one minute. <laughs> and I'm having another point, and this point is about the global warming. Industrialization, industrialization in Uganda, this has led to global warming. Can you warming. put your phone in silence How? or you switch it off, please? Somebody's phone ringing. Go ahead. This has led to global warming. How? The, the too much accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that damages the ozone layer. How? This brings the too much sunshine that we are having here in Kalungu, and hence it hinders the agricultural development. Thank you. The laziness of, Kanu, of Kalungu people. <laughs> uh, this is Chiraga John Buck. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, agricultural productivity have, got, have had various problems, among which is NADS itself. It's NADS that has brought problems? Yes. Uh, for example, we had NADS coordinators at different levels. They used to be like a small goal. Do we have any NADS official in this house? Yes. <laughs> Be, be, before you speak, please, NADS has been accused. You are selling the seeds that are supposed to be supplied to the people. Why are you doing that? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Actually, it's a very good advantage to me to, to inform this, the members about NADS. And I want to start by saying that uh, it's not the NADS staff that cheated these people. Who are those who are but cheating? It was just the government police, actually. That NADS was them. put in place by a NADS Act, which was 
enacted in the parliament. No, but are you selling the seeds? That's the question. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are not selling the seeds. What is yeah. happening to the seeds? Seeds are being procured by procurement committees. Procurement committees are made by farmers themselves. So, no NNR staff who is involved in procurement of these inputs. So, people are not knowing that. It is the farmers themselves that identified the suppliers of the inputs. <laughs> them. So, if you tell me that these are NAD staff selling inputs, yeah. that is very wrong. Okay, thank because you. Because we have a procurement process. I wanted to, to throw some light on the procurement process. Because it was a very long process, farmers identified their suppliers, they supply them with the inputs. We have the technical people, agriculturists, coming in to, to, to see the quality of these inputs. These were not needed staff to see the quality of the inputs. So yes. it's the farmers themselves yes. who are achieving themselves. Yeah. Thank, you. Th Thank you so much. I'll give you another opportunity. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we are going to hear more about the challenges that these people are facing that has brought down the agriculture sector in this uh, part of the country. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in Kalungu District discussing the challenges of agriculture sector in this part of the country. And you have had the people of Kalungu are speaking. It's not only the infertility of the soil, but also the people of this area are pretty lazy. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. Yes. What are you going to do about the laziness, about the youth being lazy, looking for white collar jobs? In order to uplift your district, what are you going to do as elders, as leaders? You are a mayor of this place, LC3 councillor, yes. LC3 chairman. Yes. What are you doing to reverse the situation? Uh, I've tried uh, to, uh, to teach the community. Where are you conducting your classes? Uh, no, I go to villages. Okay. Uh, for that, we've done it. But another problem we are getting, uh, uh, I have already highlighted it was agri uh, NADIS, but now they have brought in uh, Werefe, Operation What have the NADIS people done? Uh, I told you that those people have been like small goodies. They have been supplying poor uh, quality seeds to our people. Which <laughs> <laughs> you take that microphone, nuts you are on the spot. <laughs> you do not only steal the seeds and sell them, but you also supply the poor. Thank patients. you, Madam Speaker. I'm already getting surprised to see a, a leader who doesn't know how nuts was working because nuts were just giving advice, these people were just to advise farmers, but not to supply inputs. If you hear a leader in a community who doesn't know that a nerd staff was just giving advice and suppliers were being got from the community, you really wonder. For last year in Kalungu, we've been having a solo distributor of inputs. Uh, and that one has been given opportunity by the NADIS coordinators. They are the people who select them. Yes, they are the ones. Who, they are the ones who I know. So we are now going to Operation Wealth Creation. We've started to see problems at the start. Oh, but we shall come to that. We can see you a mature man. Thank you, Madam How Speaker. How shall we solve this situation? Actually, we need to do a lot, but still uh, allow me also to air this out, that it's a complex of factors that are, has led to the downfall of Matoke in Kalungu, and among which it's the major factor of climate change, which has been brought about by the destruction of the very many forests that have been around in Kalungu and the, the neighboring districts, like in Ikalangara. We used to have abundant Speak rainfall to people, Speak uh, to in, in Kalungu, but all these have been uh, distracted and we no longer have reliable rainfall. And you know, with the Matoke, those specialists in agriculture, Matoke needs enough rainfall, abundant rainfall for them to do well. So we need now to advance. Uh, the system and plant more trees in our communities so that we, don't, we need to stop clearly the destruction of the swamps because 
hii ni Kalungu district uh, you people of NTV since we are in partnership we shall take you around so the that, swamps that, that have is, been cleared that's part of the solution the swamps too. have been cleared and nothing is taking place and you are the people who cleared them yourselves uh, actually <laughs> Uh, it's, like, it's like it is. There are people in authority. And there are those nearing the swamps. There might be very few people uh, clearing the swamps so in their you, own interest. Did you sit and look people clearing forests as the people of Karungu? Uh, actually, we are taking actions, but you know, it's a gradual process <laughs> which we are undertaking uh, with now the Department of Environment in the district. Okay, and it's a that process. is one solution to the weather pattern. Thank you very much. Please. You have the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. What can we do to revive the glory of Kalungu and Greater Masaka at large? Thank you, Madam Speaker. To revive the glory of Kalungu, basically, as you talked about the youth, mm. as a district or as the council of the district, it must set up a bylaw or bylaws. Mm. These bylaws basically would go to the youth, especially those who go for, bait, for baiting in the mornings to evenings. So there should be time. So the youth are concentrating on baiting instead of going to the garden. Yes. Baiting time should be revised through the bylaws of the district that probably would start their baiting at some time later in the evening. Um, Which information do you want to speak about? Give mom, take up this microphone. You want to give him information? Please do. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, he has talked about, the uh, Honorable Speaker has talked about sports betting. But I would actually want to assure you that this sports betting, yes, it's there. But the youth do it in their leisure time because it's part of leisure. So it's like they don't go there. Okay, they go there in the morning. So you time. encourage your fellow youth to go for betting? No, I don't encourage them. Eh? I don't encourage them, but since it's, it's a bit of leisure, of course they have to enjoy themselves if it's a rural area. And Are you aware that it is, it, it, it is, it, it, they have to pay money to, to participate in betting? Um, yes, honorable chairperson, I'm aware that they have to pay money. But then if it was money, then why did these political officials put it there? <laughs> okay. Thank you, honorable chairperson. Thank you. You have got the information from the youth. I've got the information from the youth. What are you waiting for as a leader? As leaders, we also, have, as laws, leaders uh, we also have challenges because these are, these are our voters. You do what? They are our voters, we have a challenge. A challenge because they so are you our fear voters. to bring up the bylaws? And that's one of the factors. It's a challenge. I may want to bring such laws, but, but probably fear among you lose the other the members, they may refuse to do, to do that. <laughs> there is time for people to, to, going to bars. You see people going to buzz from money. It could be maybe a borrowed by the district that we should start off later. Order, order, honorable members. It is at my discretion to give you an opportunity or not. So, go ahead. So, as a district, we have to do something. That's one, one, of, one of the points. Mm. But again, to draw back to some point, some years back, it was the reluctance of the government to do its job, I would say. Because there were pesticides that we were brought to, to, our, to, to our communities. Basically, here in Uganda, I would say, that affected our soils a lot. Which year was that? I would say 15 to 20 years back. Because at one point I was in Eva and I met some, some gentleman. He was the chairperson of the I believe, by then. And he said, a few years to come in Uganda, probably you do have no good soils. Because you have... You have, you have uh, um, allowed such pesticide to come to your areas. And okay. within our areas here, we don't use anything like the pesticide. We only use these cow dungs and the rest, yeah. natural things. But it has happened. That's why you are seeing, now we are maybe getting matoke from their ends. But it was the doctors of the government who to, to allow poor quality pesticide to come to the country. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You have been standing for a long time. Please, can we take up the podium? When we consider the, uh, the past governments of uh, six cities, as the chairman said, that uh, people could, the government could protect the, 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 this, co this coffee as the, the club, the best club. This co coffee in the world, it is almost, it is related to the oil. 
in, in terms of benefits. But the government has uh, ignored this, this policy and bring this privatization. So part of the government, the government. <laughs> contributed to that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Your time is up. Okay. Yes, as a nice person, what do you think we can do? Ah, thank you, because madam. Because it is a problem. Yeah, we thank have you. lost the matoke, we have lost the coffee, the people are poor, mm. and generally the district is not doing well. Mm. So what can you do? You are a nice person who has... The <laughs> yeah, thank you, madam <laughs> yes, speaker. Yes. I have about three solutions mm. to this problem. First one is just to stop relying on rainfall. Rainfall is actually doing us very big problem to our farmers. You may find that some crops are not doing well because of relying on rainfall. We should come in with, with the irrigation. That one should be adopted. Second is to become up with some serious political leaders. You have this cheap politics. People want votes and they can't tell people to work. We should copy Mr. Mutabaz of Luengo. He has done some good work, forcing people to work. That one should also be come up. And lastly, government policy actually. We should look at some subsidies on agricultural inputs so that these people can come up and buy these inputs at a cheaper price. And even the budget on agriculture should be increased. You may find that uh, Ugandan budget, we get out with less than 10% in agriculture. So the government should come up and at least bring at least 10%. But as a, as a NADS official in this district, yes. what are you going to do to ensure that the people get... Uh, good quality seeds, and also the corruption within the supply of seeds. Me, I don't like to deal with this ideas of supplying inputs to people. That is, but cre it is creating actual laziness. Once you give inputs to farmers, you're bringing laziness. We should look at some serious farmers, some fifth serious farmers. They bring in their, their proposals and they, they get supported but not a matter of giving out inputs. This is a wrong idea, and you can't improve agriculture once we are doing this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, please have the podium. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My name is Chimbugwe Richard. We can remain cursing, doing what? But the only thing I can see is our leaders, district leaders, to find out, take in equal people, and then go down deep in the villages, educating people about the situation. There is no way we can get rid of the problem. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a, you are, please come and speak. You have been putting up your hand for a long time. As you study, also hoping to go to look for a white college job, please go ahead. <laughs> First is the government should set up strict laws against corruption and embezzlement of funds. By here, corruption and embezzlement of funds is one of the factors. It is the most factor which has led to agriculture to be absent in Uganda, most especially in Kalungu. Mm. What do I mean here? The government is always willing to give out money to assist in the agricultural sector. But you find that the process through which that money passes to reach the peasant is somehow not okay. <laughs> so I think that the government should check up that one. My second view or solution is that the government should fight and improve or acquire modern technology. If you see that some of the factors people are complaining about, the speaker, is that land is now becoming exhausted. But I would like, to, and if the government could acquire technology like in Kenya, okay. people now can grow potatoes, Irish potatoes, on water, not on land. They, and they have based a lot of work, a lot of money. So the government should take that step. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay, thank you. Government at Uyambe is a slogan everywhere. They want government to come in and help in this and this. And yet you have the energy to pick up the hole and till your garden. Yes, you have had the people of Kalungu. They have several problems that has brought down or that has affected the agriculture sector in this district. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, we are going to discuss to see whether operation, uh, whether creation 
is going to help the situation or will somehow revive the glory of this district in terms of growing matoke and coffee. Welcome back. You are still watching NTV People's Parliament sitting here in the Kalungu district. As you are aware, Kalungu, as part of Greater Masaka, was one district that was a major producer of matoke, a major supplier of matoke. Talk about it, even coffee, but what has gone wrong? People are lazy, you see, are running to the towns, soil infertility, but we are asking, will wealth creation be part of the solution? Yes, honorable member. Do you think Operation Wealth Creation that has been introduced by government will help this place revive its former glory? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, my fellow honorable members. Uh, Operation Wealth Creation, it has, just by, it, it has just been introduced, so we are still studying it. We are still absorbing it. The policy is not still clear, so I cannot really conclusively say it will or it will not. But going to the point, how are we going to, to be able to achieve it? I think I can only give a piece of advice. Operation, Operation Wealth Creation should look at the three major factors that are I, these days that are being used by people who have achieved um, wealth. One is genetics. If people can concentrate on improving the genetics of the inputs, they are going to bring in, especially when, well, these days we have to look at weather resistant crops, um, uh, the animals which fasten and grow very fast. So you can consider, if you're going to, 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 to concentrate on, say, a cow, look for a cow which can mature in nine months. And you get the, the, the what? You get it off to the market. If you, you look at hens, consider hens which can grow in one, in one month. So that is where we should go. We should adapt to the changes. Uh, the next thing, the next, the next thing is feeds. We should consider feeds that can, that can really enrich the, 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 the input. Say if it is maize, you look for feeds, could be fertilizers, which are going to help these crops grow very fast. If you're looking at cows, look for feeds which are going to help these cows, which in their genetics, they're already fast growing. But you look at the feeds, which are going to make them again grow very fast. Because even if you have the genetics, which is good, but the feeds are bad, okay. you're not going to get any Thank result. you, Honorable Member. The last Your point time is, is up. The last point is management. If you have these two, you have the genetics and the feeds, but your management is poor, still, you're not going to achieve the end point. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yeah. Mama, you had put up your hand, please. Oh. About wealth creation. Now Do you think that will be part of the solution to revive this uh, uh, part of the country? Yes. Right now, the NADS has done so much, I think, because people have been uh, given cows, and this cattle can really produce manure. This manure can help. That's another problem that the chairman says, the problem of supplying free things, free things. Yes, what has but it has helped the because of the, district. The, cat, the cows can produce manure, which manure is going to, pro, to fertilize the soil, and then we shall have high yield of the bananas. And then our glory will be revived. Okay. And then the nuts has done much to sensitize the youth, much as they are still weak, but at, to a certain extent in their groups, they have been sensitized, and they are now coming up to grow some fruits, some crops, and the production, the production is going high. And since the, the youth have been sensitized today, the youth are the majority in our country. And if they get involved in growing crops, growing a lot of fruits which, which have been given out by the nuts, I think we shall have the growth of Karung back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. RDC, you represent the president in this district. Do you think we are moving in the right direction uh, given that government has introduced the Operation Wealth Creation? Is, Madam, it, is it moving on well anyway? Madam Speaker, we are moving on well. Um, as you may recall, one of the problems of law 
agricultural productivity was lack of improved planning but planting Speak materials. to the people. Mm. Operation where the creation has come up uh, and it is actually distributing improved planting material. In Kalungu, we have already distributed over one million coffee seedlings. Am I right, production officer? One million coffee seedlings has been, uh, uh, has been distributed to farmers. Over 10,000 banana suckers have also been distributed to farmers. Are they of good quality? Of good quality, because they have been tested and proved. We have also distributed 31 heifers. They are already out there at farmers. We have given out improved planting material of cassava. We have also distributed maize. Over 10,000? 11,000 kilograms. So the program is moving on very well. And we think it will really help our farmers. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I will ask you to come this side and tell us. You see, the representative of the president has outlined what operation, what creation is doing. Do you think we are going to achieve? Do you think this will uh, uh, push us towards reviving uh, Kalungu district? Yeah, the whole operation where the creation is coming. It, it is already there. It they have already supplied seeds. They yeah. have supplied uh, cows. They have supplied bananas. Everything. The, the supply may not have a serious impact on the community due to the fact that what are the intention of supplying these facilities, inputs? Is it political, social, or economical? <laughs> Where is the sense of ownership? <laughs> like I can say, he, he brought 16 heifers to the youth. It was within NRM leadership use something because they were making a lot of noise that they are going to Mbabas. Those, those animals, some of them, they are not alive. They died because it was given to a youth leader who did not have even a farm. The sense of ownership is very important. Are you monitoring these things that you're giving out, Mr. RDC? Are you monitoring? Please take the microphone. In, in, in a a moment. Are you monitoring what you're supplying to the farmers? My voice is not the best, but we are monitoring what we are giving to farmers. Are you aware that some cows have died? We are aware and we are on ground. There are mistakes which we are made when we are giving out heifers to the young people. They were not assessed. They were not prepared. But these heifers we have given out under Operation Wealth Creation, we have really made our assessment very well. And those heifers are there and doing well. So you will not make more mistakes? Yes. Please go ahead, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yeah. I would appeal to community who have benefited in this fora to take that sense of ownership. We have done so many things. At the end of the day, they call, Chairman, your borehole died. It's not producing The water. poor hollow dies. Hey. <laughs> they are telling all this. The community should be sensitized about ownership. That's why I told you in the previous speech that free things will not improve people's so lives. So how do you think government would have handled this operation wealth creation? People should have been prepared for that. The operation wealth creation has come at a late stage. I don't know the intention of it. But, but I would appeal to the community that whoever has benefited in this operation where it's created does not take it as a free thing. The problem is people think it's free. They, they don't take that ownership. Okay. There would be a condition to whoever receives a, a hyphen, it should make a contribution. But they are just giving out completely free and these people, they lose the sense of ownership. Okay. That's my point. Thank you. Free gov uh, free freebies, please government. Avoid them. Uh, yes, you have th the Thank you very much, <laughs> Madam Speaker. Yeah. The other key ingredients of Operation Wealth Creation 
which are, are likely to make it be a success, which have not been mentioned, are two. The first one is mobilization. Operation Move closer to the microphone, Honorable Member. Unlike the previous interventions, has a strong element of mobilization. And as I speak now, we have thoroughly and mo uh, thoroughly mobilized the community in this di district to engage in agricultural production. So people are likely to handle things well and own them. So within which time do you expect results to see uh, uh, Kalungu on the track moving towards revival? In the interim period, Madam Chairperson, we have already started uh, seeing the results. Because mm. like for the annual crops, the maize, which my Ara just talked about, already we are realizing very, very good harvests. Okay. Then the other aspect that has, uh, uh, anybody has not yet talked about is the issue of mindset change. You've talked about uh, youth going to urban areas. But that is because people don't know and don't believe that agriculture can pay them as well as any other source of employment. So right now we are getting people to believe and see for themselves that if they grow tomatoes, they can even better, earn better than somebody who is seated in an office somewhere. And people have started seeing this. We have youth in this district, Madam Speaker, who are earning millions now. They are driving cars. They are building houses okay. out of tomatoes, out Thank of earnings from tomatoes. They have exported to Thank Sudan. You. There's somebody wants to give you information, but he has left the podium. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Which information in just less than a minute? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, um, Madam Chairperson, I'm a transporter, and then, you know, many farmers, people don't laugh, I'm a transporter. <laughs> many farmers in, deep in the villages harvest their crops, but why are people murmuring? He's a border border transporter, he has yes, already yeah. told you. Go ahead, you are a transporter. And then the transportation, the transportation is too poor. Yeah. The roads, the roads deep in the villages there. They, we charge them much money, not because we want much money, but just because of the poor roads. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have heard the people of Kalungo. They are very concerned about the agriculture sector in this part of the country. And they have brought out solutions. They welcome operation, wealth creation, but they say politics should be out of that project to make it a success. You are watching NTV, People's Parliament. And I am aspired to inspire you Ugandans. Before I expire, I am Agnes Nandutu, the Speaker of this Parliament. Until next time, I adjourn this house. The views expressed on this show do not represent those of NTV or its staff.